Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, a real pleasure to see you. I say, where have you been? You've stayed away for some months now. Indeed, we took a very long journey and barely made it back. However, we have more important matters to discuss. Didn't you say you have some knowledge of ancient people, their language, writings and customs? Indeed I did, Mr. Holmes. Why do you ask? You are just the man we need. I ran across this esoteric text during our travels and wondered if... Is there something wrong, Barnes? Mr. Holmes, wherever did you find this? This book, it is worthy of a museum. If you could be so good as to translate some of these fragments for me, I would be in your debt. I am particularly interested in these pages here. They are in the poorest condition and therefore appear to be the most used. With pleasure, I will get to work straight away and keep you informed of my progress. Strand! Get the strand! Three ships still missing at sea! All aboard feared lost! Get the strand! Latest word on the missing ships! Give me the latest edition. There's a good lad. Thank you, mister. Watson, consider the news of all these missing ships. I have an idea, but it will be necessary to secure a chart for the Scotland coast and nearby seas. No point in asking Barnes. I have no desire to divert his attention from the translation. True enough, Holmes. But where else would we find such a chart? It's elementary. It is a sea chart we seek. We must go to the harbour. Good day, sir. Good morning to you, gentlemen. Would you care for a pint, or perhaps something finer? Thank you, but at the moment I have need of information and will have to miss another glass of your fine ale. More's the pity. Would you happen to know where I could find charts of the local waters? They are all kept at the harbour master's office, but I am afraid only those with port business are allowed to enter. I trust you understand. Precisely. What I need is a chart of the Scottish area, where all those ships have wrecked recently. Indeed. Such a sad tale. All those poor souls lost at sea. It seems as if the very devil is at work there. Hang on. A chart of the Scotland coastline, you said? It seems to me I have one in my room over there, behind the bar. Here's the key. Take it and have a look for yourself. If you find it, it's yours for the taking. A photograph of Rochester as a young man. I have what we need, Watson. Now, let's examine this map. Watson, that's what those mysterious figures meant, longitude and latitude. They indicate a point along the Scottish coast called Ardnamurkham. Let's bring back the key to the tavern keeper and see if he knows this place. Did you find everything to your liking? Indeed, you are as good as your word. I found the charts, just as you said. Does the name Ardna Merkham mean anything to you? Ah, yes. It's a lighthouse along that very coastline. Legend has it, the place was built over a pirate's hideaway. In fact, now that I think on it, 
That spot is right in the middle of the tempest that is taking down all those ships. Rather odd-looking building. They say the chap who built it, Stevenson I believe his name was, that he fancied up the entrance with foreign symbols, Egyptian obelisks and, and even a dog with wings. Strange fixings for a lighthouse, isn't it? Mr. Holmes, that gent Barnes is looking for you. He says to come quick. Most urgent news. Mr. Holmes, I was able to translate the pages that you wanted. Come, I will show you. This book is quite ancient. It tells of a terrifying sect devoted to strange entities. The descriptions are vague, but we can presume the origin of this myth arises from the destructive leviathan represented in the Bible, a creature said to sleep and dream in a strange city under the sea. A nightmare sleeping within the sea. To be exact, the pages you asked me to translate are in fact a prayer or invocation to this entity and the description of the ceremony associated with it. To be frank, what is described in this book would make one laugh, were it not for its reliance on such horribly obscene, morbid and bloodthirsty language. And this ceremony, what can you tell me about it? Promise me, you will not laugh. The book says that hundreds or thousands of years ago, during a particular alignment of the stars, a priest performed these rites, invoking the name of a destructive leviathan. The priest intoned his name and called for his return to this earth so his followers could give him his due. The priest then asked a representative of each nation on the earth to recite the invocation and sacrifice themselves to the sea from atop a colossal natural rock tower surrounded by water. All this is quite absurd, isn't it? Pray continue, Barnes. As you like. It goes on to say that the ceremony must be held under the image of the messenger of the outside gods. Nothing more exact is said on these entities. However, from their description, their messenger would have a form rather close to the Egyptian Sphinx, except that his face is without feature and jet black in colour. So an idol in its likeness must be present during the ceremony. But can you imagine that? Some so-called priest and an international crowd atop a tower singing in unison before some faceless winged stone lion? I can imagine it very well, Barnes. You say that these people are to throw themselves into the sea so that their god will have his due. But what is it about? What does this god seek? That's the most preposterous part of this tale and proves it to be pure myth and fancy. Even for the sake of argument, this ceremony could never have happened. In such ancient times, it would have been quite impossible to gather representatives from every nation on Earth and in one place. I understand, Barnes. Humor me a bit more and please answer my last question. What would this Leviathan want from us? Indeed, we would owe this creature our world. According to this, complete the ceremony and the collective sacrifice, invoke the demon, and he will arise and swallow the earth. <laughs> yes, Holmes, they sought nothing less than the end of the world. <laughs> what nonsense! <laughs> Thank you, Barnes. I must leave now. Goodbye. The newspaper dating before our departure. Watson, find it. There was some article about the current alignment of the stars. This may tell us precisely how much time we have left. But Holmes, surely you can't believe... The newspaper, Watson. Find that newspaper. Look, Watson! The light is barely lit! This explains the shipwrecks and recent disappearances. Holmes, if we do not find a place to land, and soon, I fear they will add our names to those poor souls lost in these seas. Oh my God, Holmes, look! The sea, 
It just swallowed him. Lambs for the slaughter. Watson, we must stop this. They took particular pains to give this statue a featureless black face. They took particular pains to give this statue a featureless black face. It is sealed tight from the inside. This rope is hardly reliable, but it's the best that we have. Indeed, barrels of fresh water. This wet wooden piece must weigh as much as two elephants. This isn't right. Perhaps if I begin again. Watson, here are three geezers of seawater. We could do well to remember what McGrinty's man said before they slit his throat. This must be the place. You know my methods, Watson. Let's examine the soil closely. I begin to think those pirate tales are more than mere superstitions. You may well be right, Holmes. And about the ghost? Who knows, Watson? Who knows? Holmes! <laughs> Come on, Watson. We are men of science, aren't we? A real danger waits for us in this lighthouse, if we reach it. To reassure you, I will take the lead and go down first. Let's see. It seems to me it is rather an abrupt descent. How should we go about this? Don't worry, Watson. I appear to still be in one piece. This rope is finished. But fortune is on our side, as the lantern is undamaged. This ground is unstable. I dare not take a step without the light. Holmes! I will try to join you!
No, Watson, stay where you are. This rope is useless. We are quite separated, my friend. I will try to find the way to the lighthouse alone. Although, to be honest, I would feel much better with a weapon at my side. No, keep your pistol. It could discharge if dropped. Here now, I have an idea. Toss me that iron bar instead. Watch out! Watson, what rotten luck. It is stuck. Holmes, I can't understand what you are saying. I can barely make him out. Bad luck. The hole must be blocked with debris. From now on, I have only my wits to serve me. This skeleton has fossilized. It must have been here for years. The only foe I could hope to beat with that is a serving of pudding, and even then only if it were lightly prepared. Alcohol has killed him. Sails, sails, and more sails. They might serve as rags. We shall see. Yes, there is something here. Yes, there is something here. Perhaps if I call out, Watson will hear me. Watson! I say there, Watson! No use, he can't hear me anymore. To fall into this crevice would mean certain death. This will do nicely as a ladder. He liked his drink, apparently too much. Ah, still some left. <gasps> this drink twists a man's gut at least 95 degrees, and age has not improved it. This should prove useful. Yes, there is something here. I must find a way to move this without breaking it. And there, it is done. There is a barrel up there. It must be well protected against the humidity and is worth a look. What have we here? A powder keg? Hmm. It has been sealed tight, so the powder inside may still be of use. I cannot take this. It's too heavy. And there, it is done. <gasps> 